Natalia Bonner. Happy Monday. I am so excited to be here today and share block number nine in our free year long stitch along Let's Stitch a Year of Blocks. I've been having so much fun sharing these blocks. Now, today's block is a nine patch block and I'm sharing it with you a little bit early. So this is actually September's block. I'm sharing it now because beginning September 1st, my second free stitch along of the year, the nine patch along 3.0 starts. What is the nine patch along 3.0? I'm so excited about this stitch along. So every year in September for the last, well, this is the third year, I share this free stitch along called the nine patch along. In this stitch along over the course of generally nine days, this year it's going to last 12 days, I share every single day consecutively free video tutorials where I will teach you how to machine quilt using machine quilting rulers a nine patch quilt block. So I like to do the nine patch because it's a traditional block. We all make nine patches or patchwork blocks and hopefully the designs that I share with you, you'll be able to take and use on your own quilts. All right, so before we hop over to the video or to the machine and start stitching, just a few products that I'm using here. The batting that I'm using is one layer of the Quilter Stream Poly Deluxe. I am going to be using my four-in-one machine quilting ruler, and I am going to be doing a little bit of marking. Now you can pick up all these products. You can also pick up the companion workbooks, which include a piecing pattern and a design workbook, which includes all of the designs that I'm sharing throughout this stitch along, but also we have one for the nine patch along. So I know I'm telling you a lot. I'm giving you a lot of information. Head over to our website, peaceandquilt.com to find out more. For now, friends, let's hop over to my machine and let's get stitching. I'll start out this fun block by stitching in the ditch all the way around the outside of the block. Once I have that complete, let's start working on the block. I'm going to use my 4-in-1 machine quilting ruler and also stitch in the ditch on my 9 patch. Now I love the look of stitch in the ditch work. I love how it just finishes things off really nicely. And here, where I'm quilting on a panel, I feel like it really helps kind of define the spaces and kind of give it the look of being pieced, even though it is a panel. So as I'm doing my stitch in the ditch work, I always have a ruler foot on my machine and I'm going to be using a machine quilting ruler. Anytime you're using a machine quilting ruler and a ruler foot, you're going to hold your ruler so that the ruler is a quarter of an inch away from where you want your thread to intersect. My inside out and trailer rulers have little notches on those that are designed to help you stitch right along the ditch. All right, now that I have all of this stitch in the ditch work on the block complete, let's start working on the blocks. I'm going to start in one of my corners. You can start in any corner. I'll hold my four in one machine quilting ruler so the one inch marking intersects my corner. So that's the third marked line on the ruler intersects the corner. I'll stitch to the point where I'm about in the center, so about that corner point, and then from there I'll stitch back across to the opposite corner on my block. Now from there I'm going to repeat that process on the opposite side, so I'll end up right back where I began stitching. Once I get back to that corner, now I'm going to fill in this new diamond shape with some figure eights. Once I have those figure eights complete, let's move on to the next white block. I'm going to start out using my four in one machine quilting ruler and the largest curve on that ruler. And I'm going to stitch a curved line right to the center top point. From there, I'll stitch another curved line across to the opposite corner. Once I have that complete, now I'm going to fill in some curved lines on the inside. So I'm not doing any marking here. I am totally eyeballing the distance as I stitch out these curved designs on the inside. So I'll stitch to that center point. Again, we're moving to the next block and we'll walk through it one more time. Stitch to that center point, back to the opposite corner. 
Then from there, I'm going to stitch across, travel down my stitch line, and then back to where I started. So when I stitch across, making that curved line filling on the inside, I'm coming down about an inch and a half into the block design. If you want to go through and add markings, you totally can add markings, but sometimes you can eyeball and really end up with great designs. As I travel down my stitch line, I'm going to travel down about an inch before I stitch that second curved line back to the inside of the block. All right, from there, let's now travel to the next orange corner block where we'll stitch that diamond shape again right through the center and then fill in again with those figure eights. So notice as I stitch my figure eights, I start out small in the corner and then from there my lines or my figure eights start getting bigger as I fill in that space completely. I like my figure eights to look really nice and consistent so I try to keep my loops about the same width. Obviously the height of them is going to get a little bit smaller as I work my way through my block. Now that I've worked all the way across that block, you will see that I am going to travel back along some of my original stitch lines. Now I am using the so fine thread on my top and the bottom line thread on my bobbin. So I do feel like if I have to stitch over my stitch lines more than once, I still end up with a pretty great overall design. So let's move on now to our third white block where we'll quilt that fun curved triangle right through the center and then add those echoes on the inside. Once I have that third block done, now I'm going to move to my third corner <laughs> as I work my way around my block and start out with that diamond design and then fill that diamond design in again with those figure eights. So you can really start this design in any corner, any place you want really, and then work your way around the block from there. Now I love how this design is turning out, but you can always dress up designs like this however you wanted. A couple of fun ways to dress up this design would be that background around the outside of the curved triangles. You could add a filler in there, a really heavy filler like matchstick quilting or even really small figure eights would make that curved diamond or curved triangle really just kind of pop and stand out a little bit more. You could also, if you didn't want to do that, you could add a filler on the bottom side of each of those triangles, something again like figure eights, straight lines, pebbles, even small swirls fill in there. And again, it would just add that extra element of detail. I like to share the designs with you, but make them your own. Add, maybe if you don't want as much quilting, do a little bit less. There are no rules. All right, because I kind of want this block to have the look of a flower, then in my center, I'm going to stitch a large swirl. So as I'm swirling into the center, notice that I do stitch my lines kind of far apart. I would say they're about a half an inch apart so that then I can leave enough space to stitch back out. Once I have that center block complete, now I'm going to move on to my final corner and I'm going to finish off this corner again with that diamond design and then filling it in with those fun figure eights. I love how this block turned out. This has been such a fun design to stitch out. All of these designs have been. I love this series and you all know how excited I am about nine patches and I can't wait for September 1st. The nine patch along 3.0 begins. <laughs> 